Sure. Um, hi, Sebastian. Thanks for helping my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Hi, Nathan. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm Sebastian. I live in Germany. Um, um, and I like space. And I have liked space since I was a little kid. And my, my dad uh, called me downstairs in the living room. was like, hey, you need to see this. You need to see this. And I was like a space shuttle landing on TV. Um, and yeah. Um, I uh, also like music and many other things, but space is always like has always been a matter that is very close to my heart. Um, if you had to uh, explain why space excites you, uh, what do you think about it? Interests you? I mean, why why does it excite you? Um, well, I think the main reason is that it's. It's just cool, you know. That does that make sense? Like, it it's not actually like something that um, that uh, that has like a logic behind it in my head. It's more of a yeah, spaceships are just fucking cool. They, they're just yeah. Please excuse the, the profanity there, but it's it's just it's just so exciting. Like seeing things fly out to other planets. Like no matter if that if that's in like a science fiction movie or if it's in, in real life and, in, and if it's in real life it's actually much more exciting because it's it's actually happening you know yeah it's kind of funny um you know if you look at sports like uh soccer or baseball or basketball you know from the outside from a logical standpoint those can't be really explained um either right mm -hmm. but the fact that you have millions of people excited about it is sort of like a, a self reason uh, to to make those things acceptable and exciting um they have a critical mass if you will um yeah, but a space isn't quite at the same level as uh you know um soccer or or baseball or basketball and and i was wondering you know what do you think it would take to make it so people and like large groups of people were just as excited as you were? Um, yeah, I don't know. This is something I've, I've always been wondering about. Actually, I've, I have made that comp comparison myself in the past. So like uh, when, when I talk to people about space uh, and they're like, hey, wait, why do you like it? And they're I'm like, well, you like, you like football. So it's kind of a similar, similar excitement. Um, yeah, I think the the problem that that space has in that regard is that you know football or any any sports really is something that people can just do by themselves. Um, you know, you, you just need a ball and a few other people and some space outside, and then you can play football or uh, whatever. And for space flight, it's something that is so well, it's so far away to so many people, and it's not it's not as accessible as sports are so people i think have a much harder time relating to it because to me like it's exciting technology and it's just you know planets are fun places to visit and it's you know imagination blah blah, blah. but uh, to people who are not that you just don't care about technology that much it's yeah it's not the same doesn't have the same accessibility to it i think and yeah, I, I think you're definitely right. Accessibility is uh, definitely a, a difference between uh, sports and space. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's another aspect that I think is critical, too, that's missing, and that is the unpredictability, um, the, the sense that the outcome uh, could be a lot different than what you think. You know, you have two sports teams play against each other. One is, like, so much better than the other but something amazing happens. And the one that, that's like not so good actually ends up winning the game. And people are like, whoa, look at that. I was, the, you know, whereas with space, the whole point is to make it as predictable as possible. I mean, like mm -hmm. to, to kind of squeeze out all of that uncertainty and make it as predictable as, as possible. And yeah, that's a, that's a very good point, yeah. And I think it's, um, the one very big aspect of 
uh, why like a company like SpaceX, for instance, right now, why they're so popular because they're like they're not only sharing their um, you know successful results like most other space company companies would do, um, but they're also sharing like their day to day failures. They I think one of their most popular videos on YouTube is just a compilation of rockets blowing up. And that's, that's what gets people excited about it. It's like, they, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, or they're just testing something and uh, maybe it's going to blow up. Maybe it's going to succeed and we can all uh, watch it live on the internet. So yeah. maybe that's, maybe that's the thing that's, that, that will, uh, that will make the difference for, for space in the future. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. I mean, uh, SpaceX, in a way, gave us that with their Starship high altitude test. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, it took off. It, you know, it's like at its peak. It's like coming back down. Oh, it blew up. <laughs> well, the next one make it. You know? Oh, this one landed, yeah, but then exactly. took off again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly like that. And, and, and it's, um, it's how they're like, not stopping to do that like even with their like the, the falcon 9 launch vehicle which already does a lot of this you know reusability you know you fly up you come down again you re reuse the whole rocket uh, in the beginning that was super exciting and I, I i watched every live stream and like lots of people i, I knew uh, watch watch it all and um it's become much much less exciting for this particular launch vehicle because it just works every time now um, but they're continuing to 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 innovate, right? They're they're building these uh, Starship super heavy launch vehicles uh, that are like the next evolution. So that makes it exciting again, and I think that's that's a big part. Like um, it will always like at some point when you when when somebody has figured out how how to do it, it's gonna be less exciting at some point. But uh, yeah, the, then then the, then the point is to just just keep taking the next step, which is also like, I mean, we're technically this interview is about like going to the moon. Um, but I think the, the most important part of about, about this time going to the moon will be not just staying there, not just being like, hey, okay, so we flew to the moon, we brought some rocks back, there's some science that was cool. And now we're, well, we're doing that a bunch of times. and then do nothing but the the point will be to keep doing it and then keep adding stuff on top like i don't know people talk about like yeah we're going to the moon and then we're going to mars so that 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 could be something like that or we're sending people to the moon and then we're building the city there for example so always about taking yet another step Okay. And I guess there's been a couple of other things um, in the past year that have also been exciting like that. I mean, um, one is, uh, you know, the, the little flying machine they put on, on Mars, uh, actually seeing oh, that yeah. work. I mean, it's just like, whoa. And then, um, you know, kind of a scary thing with the James Webb telescope. Will, will those hundreds of single point failures actually make it through and will it? And, you know, so that's kind of cool. And then, then now you have like the, um, you know, rocket labs with the electron uh, a rocket trying to catch yeah. in midair. It's like, uh, can they catch it? They can catch it, but can they keep it? No, not quite yet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just the first try. So maybe next time they'll, they'll do it. Yeah. That's, but it there, there are so many, so many exciting things happening in space flight right now. Not just uh, the thing about we're going to the moon, but yeah, it's, it's so much. There's so much movement right now and so much that you can follow and be excited about. And I, I still remember when it was basically only space shuttles, right? And they flew like once every couple of months, maybe. And then one of them blew up and then they didn't fly for, for a couple of years. So uh, you always had to wait. And now it's basically you can, you can watch a rocket launch every week. I know. So. It's like, yeah, it's like uh, you don't know if you just... If this rocket launch just happened, is happening, is about to happen, and, and it doesn't matter. It's like uh, it's like well, okay, missing a showing of a movie. We'll catch the one in two hours, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I have, I have this app 
uh, on my phone that tells me whenever a launch is happening and I feel like I get a notification every other day, <laughs> which is great, right? It's, uh, I mean, it does make it more normal. It kind of takes the excitement away, but also it's, uh, it's great. Like, I love it. I love the, that there is so much going on right now in the space industry. But uh, talking about the moon, uh, when did you find out that we were planning to send astronauts back to the moon? Oh, um, I mean, since I'm, I have been pretty regularly following the space news um, since, I don't know, at least over the last decade. So I don't, I don't remember the exact point in time where I read about it, but I must have read about it like pretty straight away, like, you know, when, the, when they did the, the press conference. Uh, I do remember, I actually do remember the, the press conference that George W. Bush did about the, the conservation program back in the day, which is kind of, you know, what then now the Artemis program is building on, like with the, the SLS is kind of, kind of sort of derived from the, Constellation uh, Aries 5, I think the rocket was. Um, so I distinctly remember that. And I must have uh, learned about the, the Artemis program pretty much right away. Somebody on Twitter probably posted it the next day. <laughs> uh, so uh, do your family, friends, neighbors, colleagues uh, know that uh, we're planning to send astronauts back to the moon? Um, some of them do. Um, some of them do because I talk about it all the time. Um, like a lot of people in my in my vicinity just you know learn about space stuff from me, and I I've, I've been giving this little workshop about how like orbital spaceflight works and all that. And they I have several people, uh, several people told me like independently from each other that uh, I've I've changed their worldview with these little talks that I give. Um, yeah, I, I bet some people do. Some people probably don't. Um, most of the time, I, I talk about like Starship and like those reusability things that SpaceX are doing. So I don't talk about the Artemis program itself so much. Um, but yeah, um, I would say maybe yeah, like twenty percent of the people that I know know about the Artemis program specifically. Yeah, that fits in uh, with the number that I have been tracking in terms of randomly mm -hmm. interviewing people at the coffee shop and the store and on the street and at the airport uh, that only about 20% uh, actually know. But uh, your orbital uh, workshop sounds fascinating. Can you tell me more about it? Um, yeah, basically, it's only uh, it's about the it's mostly about like how an, how an orbit works, right? You know, how if you, if you just send a rocket up uh, out, outside of the atmosphere, um, it, will, it will not stay there just by itself, which is what a lot of people think. Like, you know, when you just escape the atmosphere, you start escaping gravity. So at some point gravity stops, uh, which isn't true. So uh, you have to do something in order to stay there. And um, yeah, so um, I've actually took, I, I actually took a lot of uh, inspiration from, I don't know if you're, are you, are you familiar with XKCD? Oh, what is it? XKCD, it's a, it's a web Oh, XKCD, uh, I love the cartoons. I like, right, yeah. I, um, once I watch one, I'm like clicking previous random, 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 you know, it's like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. Um, and the guy who, who draws those, he also had this um, section on his website called What If, where people ask hypothetical questions and then he gives like serious like physical science answers. And there he has um, like one or two answers that go a bit into how, how that works, how, how orbits work, how you stay in space once you get there. And I took a lot of inspiration from that because it's just, it's funny. and made simple and I think he did a great job of explaining it to me so I'm now using that to explain it to others. I have to check it out. Um, you know this has been something I've been thinking about and I think a lot of terminology that is used in the space industry 
creates misconceptions for people, especially like using the word, um, you know, uh, microgravity or zero G um, that, you know, I mean, how can you, I mean, that literally is telling you there's less gravity, you know, I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. whereas opposed to like free fall or weightlessness would be a better uh, set of terms, I think, where you, you're actually yeah. describing more of the physics of what's really happening with why the mm -hmm. astronauts are, are not being pulled down to one side of their spacecraft. Yeah, that's true. Um, but like uh, using a term like free fall, I think also confuses people a lot of the time. Like when I t tell people, okay, if you're in orbit, you're basically continuously falling downwards. Um, that confuses a lot of people. And that they're like, because they think they're familiar with falling and, um, but they're not really familiar with it in this, like as it is in this particular case. Um, so it always takes a little bit of extra explanation and drawing things on a, on a whiteboard to actually get the point across. Because it's not, it's not easy, right? It's not easy to understand these things because we're just not experiencing them uh, in our normal lives. And it doesn't really automatically make sense for a lot of people, which is what makes it a little bit less accessible again. So, yeah, do, do you ever use um, like that example about the trajectory of a rock? If you throw a rock, you know, it kind of like does this arc and falls in the earth. But if you throw it further, the arc is like more gradual and it goes further. And then the idea that, you know, the earth is round. And if you threw the rock hard enough, that arc would match the curvature of the earth and it would keep missing. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's what I'm doing. It's that there's like this um this mental image of like putting a cannon on top of a, of a, a high mountain or a tower and then shooting shooting a cannonballs like horizontally um which i think is is pretty cool to use but yeah throwing a rock is basically the same thing and then to you know just one once you're explaining that and then then you can get to the point where you're saying basically everything that exists in space, like including, including stars and planets and moons and asteroids and comets and all that, they're all doing this same thing. It's not just rockets or satellites doing that. It's everything in space is following these principles. Um, I, I've taken one of those uh, zero G flights where the plane does the parabolic uh, flying. And you get experience like 30 seconds of weightlessness. Right. And, you know, uh, people are like, is that real weightlessness or simulated? I'm like, it's the exact same phenomena. The only difference is yeah. the plane has to pull up to keep from hitting the ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Um, did you do that? Did, did you like pay for that yourself or was it like a, I did. a job thing? Yeah, no, I did. I, I paid uh, for that myself. Um, I actually had my two sons uh, come with me. Uh, so mm -hmm. we did as like a family activity. I wanted my wife wow. to come, but she's like, somebody has to live. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I, I probably throw up all over the place, but I'd be so excited to try it out. You know, that was my big concern too. Um, but actually, um, nausea, I think, affects very few people because it's not like a roller coaster ride and you have no sense of falling it's just like suddenly uh you go i mean the the hardest part from a stomach standpoint was not the zero g but was like the 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 two g <laughs> going from zero to two g was like you know feeling that compression yeah. on your body i think uh that that was you know whenever they're pulling out of the the dive mm -hmm. um that that actually i think was bad but the zero the weightless part um I, that was surprisingly very tame, um, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if that exists over here in Europe, if that's the same, a thing you can just purchase. Uh, there is there is a company in Europe, and actually I think it's called Zero G as well, but they sell, really? they sell flights. I think it's like 6,000 euros or something like that. Oh my God, yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have that, that just lying around. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the for the tip. I, I wanted to check it out. Yeah, sometimes there's this uh, company. Well, it's a nonprofit organization called Space for Humanity that um, you know takes private everyday people and sends them on space adventures. Uh, so that might be something to check out too. Yeah, I'll check that out too. Super exciting. There was this um, there was this band uh, that did a music video inside one of those planes. Which band was that? Yeah, I remember um, it being very colorful. With uh, yeah, okay, go. It was okay. Go. Okay, go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's a bunch of they. They also did a bunch of like, um, how did we make this video? Uh, videos like documentary thing on on the whole process that that was super interesting. Highly recommend. You know, apparently uh, Apollo thirteen, the movie, mm -hmm. uh, was filmed in um, you know a, a plane like this, and so like the weightless scenes, they were actually really weightless for thirty seconds yeah. at a time. I heard about that too. I, I've been wondering. I've always wanted to look this up if it's because sometimes these things are only rumors and they're not actually true. So. I don't know. Is, is that actually true, or is it just something that? But and now you've saying? cast doubt on my own uh, thoughts on it because maybe I, <laughs> maybe I didn't get it from a reliable source. <laughs> maybe I need to yeah. check it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always wanted to check that out because it's I, if it's true, it's super cool, and every space movie should do this. And, um, but yeah, but who knows? Uh, of course, they would have only twenty second scenes. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. Because you need That's, time to set up and time to get secured, and the whole waitlist part's like thirty seconds. So, yeah, yeah. But some of these, uh, some of these scenes are only very short. Like if you, uh, if you watch, it, I've only I've watched the movie like a few weeks ago, and some of these, they, they have these montages of like you know just being in space, and it's always just clips that are a few seconds long. So I think it makes sense. So. Uh, and and then you have that act uh, that Russian actress that went up to the International Space Station to mm -hmm. film a show. I I can't wait to see that released. And Tom Cruise is supposed to be going up to the International Space Station to film a show. So that could be cool is too. He, is he still going? Does he did he already go? I uh, he did I not go really... yet. Oh, uh, he's okay. still he's still going. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I'm I'm wondering what this Russian film is about. No idea like how, how much he can film with just like one one actress in space is it just going to be one person on a space station hmm. yeah very know. curious hmm. um so what excites you about us going back to the moon um so one thing is that it's just as i said it's just cool and i'm just it's just this intense feeling of excitement like watching this like you're not you don't you're not sure what's going to happen and it's so like especially like watching a launch it's just super exciting it's it's something that has hasn't really happened before in our lifetimes um it's yeah it's something new it's it and i think that the biggest thing is is it is something that is going to lead to other exciting things um and um and of course, there's this whole reason reason of like, um, I mean, humanity has to go out there at some point if we as a species want to survive. Um, so just from a personal standpoint, I, I personally want humanity to survive. I know people who don't want that, but personally, I want humanity to survive. So I would like us to go to space at some point, and it's more exciting if it's happening during our lifetimes. So um, yeah, being able to be alive during that time would just be, yeah, cool to see. And it also increases my chance of maybe going to space at some point. I, I don't think it's gonna happen, but who knows? Maybe it's gonna be easy and cheap during our lifetimes. Now, there's a lot of religions that talk about the end of the world and yeah. you know, a lot of people who follow those religions, they think uh, going to space uh, might be pointless because uh, we're never intended to, to make it beyond the earth here. I, I was wondering if you get the same sense from um, uh, 
people uh, that do you think there's people that that you know of that think along those lines? Um, I don't know about this religious argument. Like most most people I know aren't very like religious, like you know, in the classical sense of the word. Um, a lot of people I know are just like, well, we're already like messing up our own planet, so um, why would it be any different in space? Um, and then I'm like, well, sure, but we're also doing a lot of good things here. And um, if if we go out there, then there is a non-zero chance that we're going to be doing good things there. Whereas if we don't go, uh, then there is a zero chance of us doing good things. <laughs> So I've, I, I've, I've just, I have decided for myself uh, at some point that I want to be, you know, hopeful about the future and I want to be, you know, I want to have a good feeling about humans in general. Like I, I'm, I'm fully aware that there are many terrible things that humans do to each other and to their environment and all that. And it's all, it's all true, but like on a fundamental level, I think, um, humans have the capacity to do good and yeah in terms of are we are we supposed to go or not um yeah like i th i feel like some some people like not not a majority of people i think that that's important to note like, but some people i i meet and talk to just are just like yeah like the universe is better off without us. And I, I just think that's not true. Well, it's definitely something in our control, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, just because uh, I, there's no reason why we can't be a force of good in the universe. Like, yeah. I mean, that, that's a choice we could make, I feel. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, and it's up to us now because we're now the, you know, or like people living, people are, who are alive now um, are part of the generations that will, um, well, hopefully um, start going out to other planets, to the moon, to Mars, maybe to wherever else. And we can make these choices now, like we're, or let's, we're, we're part of, part of, the large group of people who can make these choices. So um, that's an exciting thought, I think. Definitely. Um, so in 200 years, how far do you think humanity could get? In 200 years, um, so we definitely have the potential to, uh, to uh, have a set foot on other planets within the solar system. Um, maybe even made it to, uh, to like the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, which are very far away. Like it's, uh, it's very hard to get there. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I wanna bet on anything further than that, but maybe, maybe if, if we're lucky or if we're uh, as a species, if we are doing well, maybe we, at some at, in, in two hundred years, we'll have started solving the problem of interstellar travel. That'd be amazing to think that first mission. I mean, if you just do that one time, even takes like a thousand years to do, then you've really, then you know, I, I think in like a million years, we'll be scattered throughout the the galaxy for sure. Yeah, that's that's an exciting thought, definitely. And who knows what we'll find there. This is like, this is, to me, it's an important um, and a very important aspect of it. Like we just, we're we're a curious bunch, you know. We're we're curious people. Uh, we want to learn what's out there, and one of the most reliable ways of finding out what's out there is just going there and have a look. It's exploration. That's what it should be about. Now, if you could imagine um, one of your descendants, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your great, 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 great granddaughter um, who grew up on Mars her entire life and is now in high school doing a history project about the 2020s, mm -hmm. what's, what's something you hope she's able to write about this decade? I know we're just at the beginning of the decade, but 
if, if you were to sort of, you know, think about what you hope would happen in this decade that would be significant 200 years in the future? Um, I mean, definitely like just starting to get people out there again, um, I think is a very significant thing. Uh, just that first, those first steps towards, um, towards other moons or planets is I think very significant. Then this whole aspect of now, like we're building the technology, we're developing the, the starships that will enable us to get out there in the first place, because those so far, they haven't really existed, right? Um, it's, it's just the technology that we haven't really had. And now it's the first time that we're actually um, starting to create them, like to create this technology in the first place. Um, and um, yeah, when this uh, future granddaughter of mine looks back, I, I hope that she can, um, yeah, find some information about her ancestor who maybe, or maybe not, but, but hopefully like was a part of that. This is like one, one thing I've always wanted to do. Like it's like when, when hum humans are going out to other planets, I want to be a part of that. I don't necessarily have to be an astronaut, but like I want to have been a part of the whole journey to, to get us there. And I just recently, I've, uh, my, my dad and I, we looked through some old documents that belonged to my, my grandparents. Uh, and they had like these like super old documents from like, yeah, basically ancestors of mine from hundreds of years ago. Like, and, um, and I think that the earliest name that I found of like one of my ancestors was from around the 1490s, uh, which is, you know, it's more than 500 years ago. It's, it's wild to think about the fact that I have information on somebody who's related to me, who's like, who lived 500 years ago. Um, and that was around the time when, when Europe, European uh, settlers started exploring uh, the, the new world uh, in, in, in America. And like, uh, that must have been an exciting time. Um, lots of terrible things happened, but it was an exciting time. And um, yeah, I hope that maybe my my great 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 plus plus some more greats uh, granddaughter will be able to to find some info on her ancestor who lived during that time and maybe was a part of it. And I sincerely hope that she will be able to look back and was like, yeah, they didn't screw up this hard. Like they, they, they did mostly did a good job and didn't harm so many people along the way. That's an awesome thought. Well, Sebastian, that, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you. But uh, before we go, did, is there anything else you want to add or uh, anything else you want to talk about? Um, I mean, I could, I could keep talking for hours, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm really excited about this project. Like when I, when I heard about it, it was like, this is, this is so cool. I want to be part of this. Um, um, like having this, this idea of like a little time capsule that people in the future will be able to find is like, that's, that's exciting. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this. And uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I hope it's a resource for that history class 200 years in his, uh, the future. Yeah. <laughs> that, there, <laughs> that there's like a segment, like the countdown to the moon history project, you know? <laughs> yeah, and then, and then people have to watch through all of these little, little video clips. I've only seen a few, like maybe five, and they're all, they're interesting. It's just people being people. It's so much fun. Yeah, people are amazing. I I think whenever you get out and talk to everyday people, you're like, you know, society's not so bad. You know, yeah, we we, we live in a good place. It's when we're isolated and that we only get our information through 
news blurbs and and mm -hmm. tweets that that we start getting into this world where everything's going crazy but when you actually talk to people you're like yeah it's a good place <laughs> yeah and it, in even the the people you disagree with it's like i i just watched one of your clips uh that was i forgot what her name was but it was a, a, a lady who was like, you know, arguing like from, from a religious standpoint, it was like, this is, this is not what God intended for us. And this is uh, where we're already um, uh, sinning so much down here, blah, blah, blah. Um, and like, I, I very much didn't agree with her, but it was just so interesting, you know, hearing her talk and uh, she didn't seem like a terrible person or anything. It's just person, human being with a different point of view from, from mine. And that's okay. I mean, I get the feeling that, um, you know, if you were hurt or stuck on the side of the road, she would be one of those people that would stop and help you. You know, it's like yeah. the perfect neighbor uh, type thing. And, you know, I, I think I, I think that's great. You know, she, she yeah. happened to just be filling up her car with gas at the next stall. And I needed to interview somebody that day. <laughs> she was friendly. I was like, uh, uh, you know, so that was like really cool. It's so funny how you knew exactly who I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Sebastian, I, I hope you have a good rest of your day. And if you know anybody else that's willing to have Thanks. a conversation, I got more than 900 more days to go. Oh, cool. Yeah, I definitely, I, I'll tell other people about this. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually my birthday today. Um, oh, happy birthday. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm also, I, I, I'm sick with COVID and I'm in quarantine at home. Which oh is, my goodness, <laughs> but you look well, so that's that's good. I'm, I'm already on my way uh, toward being healthy again, so it's cool. But yeah, it's like a lot of, you know, cool things, bad things happening at the same time. And then I thought it was just a funny thing to have this, this interview thing on my birthday. So, um, well, thanks for having me. And I will, yeah, I'll try to send a few more people your way. That would be awesome. Well, um, uh, get better. And um, I hope your birthday is amazing. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, if you ever come to Houston, please get in touch. Houston. OK, so you live in Houston. That's, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, if you ever uh, find, um, find uh, your way to, to Germany or Central Europe in general, just um, Oh, uh, where where in Germany are you? Uh, it's it's a city called Bremen. Bremen, it's in the north northwest. Okay. Yeah, lots lots of space things going on here, and and Germany is like one of the, yeah, one of the places where there's lots of space things going on. Oh, there is some talk in my family about going to uh, the UK at the end of June. Maybe mm -hmm. um, go to Wimbledon. And I used to work for a company that started in York, so we might go up to to York uh, as well. So, yeah, cool. That's still a long, long time, a long, long way um, from here. Yeah. Um, maybe not by like American standards, but by European standards, it's it's a long way. <laughs> well, okay. um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. Well, and bye bye. Have a great day. Yeah.